antlers, assumptions, and artillery. It feels weird, Holly complains before they leave. Her antlers had been trimmed down and rounded off. She was now being filed down to six shorter points, many of them nubs on each side rather than ten sharp spears. It had taken hours to file it all down, and Bjorn had not been allowed to watch or even be in the same room. They weren't really comfortable with him in the apartment, so he took a folding chair, sat outside the door, and read a book as he waited. There was a lot of cultural baggage that just wasn't being shared, and that was fine. So long as it didn't interfere with his actual job of keeping Holly safe, she could indulge in any cultural practice she wanted. She was a carob after all. Being seen doing carob things didn't exactly expose her as the former host of Knife Top. Well, you only had two points on each side before this whole disaster started. Being at six per side should feel closer to normal than that weapon rack of ten. Bjorn remarks as he unlatches the door to its fullness and gets a good look at her. Her entire demeanor has changed. Was she storing her freaking confidence in those antlers? She looks less dangerous and if he can get some pale brown or tan dye into her fur and some baggy clothes on her, then you'd need a dedicated scanner or detective to figure her out. It's a good look. Holly starts to tear up and his jaw drops as Mother Clatterhooves glares at him. Really? I thought you had more tact. Don't you give me hell for not understanding the carob things that have never been explained to me. Being ignorant is one thing. Being kept in ignorance and then looked down for it is another. You wouldn't understand, Holly mutters. Then don't expect me to. If you're not going to explain, then I have no way of knowing what proper or improper things to say are. As far as I understand, the antlers are some kind of status symbol that grows out of your head and channels axiom for you. That is the extent of my knowledge, Bjorn protests. It's more than that, Mother Clatterhooves says. How so? He asks and both of them look away. He heaves a sigh of disgust. Fine, keep your secrets. Now. You wanted to go out and have a meal, right? Yes, there's a margarine's nearby, Mother Clatterhooves says. We missed breakfast and I'm not in any mood to cook. I don't know how to, Holly mutters. And neither of you will let me cook. Bjorn grumps. You think highly deadly poisons make a meal. If I could DNA lock you out of the kitchen, I would. Mother Clatterhooves scolds him and he scoffs in amusement. Right. Okay, so we're eating out. Let me grab some spare ammo and we can go, he says, brushing by them and quickly making his way to his room. He emerges a minute later with a jacket in addition to the jeans, t-shirt, and boots and nods to them both. I can sense you doing something with the axiom, what? Mother Clatterhooves begins and he pulls out a fully assembled rifle from inside his jacket in response. I see. You really take this seriously, don't you? Well, yes. Why shouldn't I? I'm a soldier. I am undaunted. Your daughter is under my protection, so if an entire army descends upon her, then I've got an entire army to grind under my boots. Now let's get some food. I've heard about something called Landrack Steak that's apparently a staple for meat eaters around the galaxy. Margarines should have it, although they tend to be more of a breakfast chain. Carnivores do tend to have Landrack for every meal if they can get it. Mother Clatterhooves remarks, I keep forgetting humans are meat eaters, Holly mutters. Right, well, we need to get moving if your mother is going to get a meal in her before she has to leave, Bjorn says as he leads them to the elevator and presses the button. The fact that so many things are so familiar is somewhat disappointing, although these ones are improved for basically going at warp speed with inertial dampeners stopping you from feeling anything. They pile in and he has to crane his head to the side to avoid getting conked on the head by Mother Clatterhooves' antlers. Martha. Martha Clatterhooves, he mutters to himself. What? she asks. Sorry, I... My mind almost entirely associates you with your daughter and your name sounds similar enough to Mother that when I think of you, it's Mother Clatterhooves and not Martha Clatterhooves. My apologies. Bjorn says before the elevator door opens. 
The Nagasha woman waiting at the bottom is greeted to an abashed-looking Bjorn and a laughing Holly and Martha. Yes, yes, I'm a tremendous goof. Can we go, Holly? Mother? Can we get a move on before Miss Nagasha here gets upset with us? Bjorn asks, and the group starts moving with Holly and Martha far from upset. It may have been due to a bit of a brain fart, but both women are much happier and that counts as at least a small win in his book. The restaurant Margren's is very much a sort of homey kind of place that you could expect a stack of waffles and a plate of bacon any hour of the day. As they walk, he slows down and gestures for them to lean close. If anyone asks what my relation to you two is, then I'm your son and Holly's brother, so you've both got reason to stick close to me, okay? Only if you keep calling me mother, Martha teases. Deal, Bjorn says, and both women giggle in response. Well, the problem of trimming Holly's antlers has been pushed aside for now. Hopefully it's not too stubborn a beast. Hey there, welcome to Margren's a single in a booth next to it? The Drin waitress asks, winking with the eyes on the left half of her face. Family booth, actually, Martha says, and the waitress doesn't even blink. Of course, right this way, please. She says her many arms in a flurry of movement as she registers where they're sitting for the automated systems in the restaurant and taps down a few incidental thing as she walks. Having six arms really lets a lady multitask. They're led into a booth and handed menus. Bjorn flips through it quickly and finds what he's looking for. Landrack steak. Couple it with some fried tubers and a side salad and his lunch is looking great. The waitress quickly swings by again and takes their orders. Apparently, both Martha and Holly really wanted their late breakfast in opposition to Bjorn's early lunch. He decides to make some small talk to relax things. So, Mother, how do you expect the day at work to go? Oh, not too bad. Not too good, either. Waste management is vital, but not something that a lot of ladies want to talk about, Martha says, and Bjorn reassesses what he thought he knew about her. He had no idea she worked in the sewage department. Too dirty, a subject, Holly teases. Yes, indeed. Thankfully, the cleaning drones are easy to pilot and easy to clean. I never even breathe the same air as is what's in the pipes, thank goodness. Saves on shampoo and showers, at least. Bjorn notes, You ever have much fun with the drones? Make them fight each other or draw silly things? Oh, not really. Most of the girls in the office are pretty humorless and liable to snitch if they catch you enjoying yourself. Yeesh! Bjorn grimaces, then offers a smile to the waitress as she brings by the jug of water and glasses he had asked for. Speaking of yeesh, I noticed you drinking quite a bit, Martha says before leaning in. Holly leans in too to listen in. How much water do you humans need? A lot. The smell we give off? That takes up a lot of water. We also have a bunch of other organs that require their own nutrients and blood and such, so fluids are in high demand, Bjorn remarks. Anything else? Does all the poison you eat really taste good to you? It tastes amazing. A lot of food we can take undressed and even enjoy them, but there are precious few dishes that can't be improved with ground sodium chloride crystals and pain kernels, most of them being those that rely on being sweet like candies or pastries. Bjorn answers. You didn't bring any with you, did you? Oh no, I left the camping shaker at the apartment. The what? A container with a sample of the most common spices humans use, easy to transport and use to spice up any meal. It could also probably double as an instrument of torture with how sensitive you people are to such things. He jokes. It's not funny, it's strange. What could possible cause a species to count deadly poisons as a regular part of their diet? Martha demands. Null in enormous quantities. Don't you bring your reason and rational explanations into my concerns, young man. She says in a louder tone as she leans back into her seat and Holly breaks into giggles as Bjorn chuckles and leans back as well. Fine, I'll just pout, get angry and start shouting next time instead, he says and Martha crosses her arms and offers him a stern look. 
He merely raises an eyebrow as he pours himself a glass of water. All right, new topic. What did you two think of the movie? The Tale of Varg Terra? Oh, very typical Apuk fair, I'm afraid. They're in love with the idea of their warriors riding off to be gallant heroes and keep trying to portray the other side as some kind of wicked dark knights unworthy of the titles. No matter who's looking backwards at history, they're almost always trying to make someone look bad. It's just universal. Bjorn notes as he thinks to his own ancestors. Love them or hate them, the Vikings certainly made an impact on the world. Oh yes, look into things closely enough and I'm sure you'll find a laundry list of justified provocations between both countries. If it wasn't for the odd forests on Serbo that create sorcerers out of dissatisfied and angry men, then it would just be another historical movie. I thought it was amazing, Holly interrupts. Oh, what did you like about it? Martha asks as Bjorn takes a sip. I mean, it was incredible, wasn't it? The way that it starts with him running from his burning village and into the forest, and as things happen, it kept going back to him growing stronger and stronger. By the time his home country was completely conquered, he was part of the forest and it roared with him. To see him grow from something so small and scared to something unstoppable was just... I mean, Holly clams up at that point and Martha leans into her to offer comfort. Thankfully, the food arrives shortly after and breaks up the awkwardness leaving Bjorn staring at a purple steak and blinking rapidly to reassess what he thought he understood about meat. It smells unlike anything he's ever smelt before. It's savory and meaty, but there's something else to it he just can't identify. First time, Han? The waitress asks, and Bjorn nods. Yeah, that's the problem when an omnivore is raised by herbivores. It's always a leap. Thankfully, she's jumping to all sorts of incorrect but understandable assumptions. Assumptions that have Holly giggling lightly to herself in amusement. Indeed, nothing to do but give it a bite then, Bjorn remarks as he cuts a generous piece of the steak and... It... What is this? His face contorts in sheer confusion as he chews and tries to figure out the meat. It doesn't taste bad. In fact, it doesn't taste like much beyond vaguely meat. The texture reminds him of steak, but the taste is just... It's not anything he's ever had. It's vaguely mammalian, but it doesn't have that gamey taste, so it's not wild. It most certainly is not beef. Nor is it lamb, though. It doesn't taste like pork or chicken or turkey or duck or goose, not any kind of fish. The closest he can place it to was the one time he'd eaten bugs on a dare past the crunch there had been a hint of something. A loud and abrasive snort draws Bjorn out of his thoughts to see Holly struggling to not choke on her waffles. It's his first time, Martha confirms to the amused waitress. Fair enough, it's always quite the show for a first timer to make sense of a meal. Okay, I give up. What is a land rack? Bjorn asks and Holly starts choking again but manages to quickly get it under control. It's a big lizard beast that eats grasses and leaves, the waitress says, and Bjorn turns to her in surprise. It's got three big tails that help it get up trees, but it only uses two at once, so we chop one off and eat that meat. They also grow the tails back so it doesn't even hurt the beast much. After a few months, the new tail is fully grown in and you can harvest from the same creature again. Huh, regenerating lizard meat. Not what I expected, but not bad. Not like anything I've ever had before, but not bad. Bjorn notes and the waitress nods and walks off with a bit of a giggle. She mentions it being another one for the wall. Feeling better? Bjorn asks Holly, who nods and he smiles before taking another bite of the very confusing meat he's now mentally slotting into its own category.